Welcome to the second video in the nucleic acid unit. In this video, we will discuss how genetic information in DNA is stored and retrieved to be used by the cell. This is important because DNA as a molecule does not actually do anything in the cell. It is similar to your USB drive. The drive itself just holds information. It needs to have computer programs to read and use that information to generate a product or response. In the cell, the process of reading and using the information in DNA is called the central dogma. The central dogma describes the process of taking the nucleotide language of one molecule, DNA, and transferring it to a slightly different version of that nucleotide language in RNA. The process of using the information in DNA as a template to make RNA is called transcription. The nucleotide language in RNA is then converted to the amino acid language of proteins according to a specific genetic code. This process of producing proteins using RNA as a template is called translation because you are translating information from one language to another language. Overall, the information stored in DNA dictates the order of amino acids in the cell's proteins, and it is these proteins which control all the cellular processes of the body. In this video, we are going to focus on the first part of the central dogma, transcription. It is important to recognize that DNA exists in every cell in the form of chromosomes. Long, continuous pieces of DNA that in a human cell can be up to 200 million base pairs long, meaning that there are 200 million A's, T's, G's, and C's in one continuous string. Along those chromosomes are genes regions of the DNA that are going to be transcribed and translated into proteins. These genes organize the information stored in the nucleotides of DNA, similar to how words and sentences organize the information stored in the letters of the alphabet. For example, if we consider the first sentence of the nursery rhyme to Jack and Jill as representing one gene, are one piece of information needed for the story. The order of the letters provides information to your brain for it to use and understand. For the cell, this is equivalent to a long string of A's, T's, G's, and C's. This sequence could represent a gene, and you might look at it like nonsense, but to the cell, it is information that will be read and used through transcription and translation to make a functional product for the cell. It is the order of the nucleotides in these genes that is important for storing the correct information. I have taken the letters and the stored information from the Jack and Jill gene and rearranged them. Although the information, the letters, is the same, the gene is no longer storing it properly and it cannot be retrieved by your brain. The same is true for the cell. A change in the DNA sequence of the gene changes the stored information in the molecule this sequence will not be transcribed and translated properly the same as the top sequence. So if you look at a region of a chromosome, and here we have a region with three genes, how is the cell able to determine where a gene starts and stops? The key is in the sequence of nucleotides. In front of every gene, there is a region of DNA called the promoter sequence. And at the end of every gene, there's a region of DNA called the terminator sequence. The promoter indicates that transcription should start there, and the terminator indicates that transcription should start there. So if gene one is transcribed, RNA will start at the promoter and be made until it gets to the terminator. Genes can occur in either direction. So in some genes, the promoter may be on the right side of the gene and the terminator on the left. In this case, when this gene is transcribed, RNA will be made from the promoter to the terminator going from right to left. It is important to note that not all genes are transcribed at the same time or at the same level. Every cell in your body all have the same identical DNA, but the cells function very different from one another. The reason your liver cell, for example, is different than your heart cell is that your liver cell is transcribing the genes for liver functions, while your heart cell is transcribing the genes for heart functions. So if this piece of DNA was found in a liver cell, then genes one and two 
are needed for liver function. But gene 3, which is not being transcribed, is needed for heart function. If you took the same region of DNA and looked at it in a heart cell, gene 1 and gene 2 would no longer be transcribed because they are not needed for heart cell function. Instead, gene 3, with its promoter and its terminator region, would be transcribed into RNA instead. This process is called the regulation of gene expression. So how does transcription actually occur? We are first going to learn how you would physically transcribe a piece of DNA. In video three, we will discuss the cellular mechanisms behind how transcription occurs inside your cells. We know that if we have a piece of DNA, transcription is going to start where there is a promoter sequence. Promoter sequences have a high percentage of thymine and adenine bases and are depicted in this figure as a ta-ta box. The key to correctly transcribing a gene is to pay attention to the 5' prime and 3' prime orientation of the nucleotide strands. Nucleic acids can only be built by adding nucleotides to the 3' prime end of a nucleotide strand. This means that it is the 3' prime end of the RNA that gets longer as a new strand of RNA is made from its 5' prime to 3' prime ends. For some genes, the RNA is built in the opposite direction than you are used to reading. Let's blow up this gene on the end and see what it looks like in detail. As we zoom in, we can now see the nucleotide bases that make up this gene. The boxed green region marks the promoter sequence and the bold purple region marks the terminator. The first step in transcription is that the two strands of DNA double helix are separated. This is required in order for the DNA base sequence to be read and used as a template to make the RNA sequence. Transcription will then begin 10 to 25 nucleotides downstream of the promoter region. When looking at a gene on a piece of DNA, downstream is towards the terminator of the gene. For this example, we will use 10 nucleotides to mark the start site of transcription. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So transcription will begin here along the DNA. The last step is to determine which strand of DNA will be the template strand and which will be the non-template strand. This is the most important step to correctly transcribe your RNA sequence. There are two things to remember. The first is that RNA must start at its five prime end and grow towards its three prime end going from the promoter to the terminator. The other thing to remember is that strands of nucleotides, whether they are DNA or RNA, must be anti-parallel in order to form complementary base pairs. This means the new strand of RNA is going to have to be anti-parallel to the template strand of DNA. The strand of DNA that will be read is a template. We know our five prime end of RNA is on the left. which means in order to be anti-parallel, the template strand of DNA is going to have to have its three prime end on the left, making the bottom strand the template. To physically transcribe the RNA sequence, we will now write in the complementary base pairs compared to the template strand of DNA. For example, the template strand starts with a G, thus there is a cytosine as the first nucleotide in our RNA strand. Thymine in DNA corresponds to an adenine in RNA, whereas the adenine in DNA would correspond to thymine if this was a DNA strand. However, remember from chapter 2 that there is no thymine in RNA. Instead, there is a uracil, so uracil complementary base pairs to the adenine in DNA. This process will continue all the way down the DNA strand.
and it will continue until you get to the end of the terminator sequence. As you look at the newly transcribed RNA sequence, you should notice that it is identical to the non-template strand of DNA. Also called the coding strand. Because it matches the code of the RNA sequence. When you transcribe DNA, oftentimes it is easier to identify the coding strand and then just copy the sequence, replacing the thiamines with uracil. You will try for yourself in the question on the next slide.